Hey there, welcome to another edition of Joe's Record Store. And, you know, for a long time, ever since I was a little kid in elementary school, I've been an Iron Maiden fan. And uh, I have quite a stack of Iron Maiden DVDs. And that stack will probably be added to again, because I just saw the uh, live in Santiago, Chile. But uh, aside from Iron Maiden... Um, I got two vocalists of Iron, current and former vocalist. Um, again, one was a lucky find in Holland. This is Diano. This is a solo project of Paul Diano. I mean, when I looked at it, it's on the you know Life of, from London series. It you know was out during the mid '80s. I believe it ran from I believe '84 to '86. I'm not sure. So, you know, any of you Brit, you know, metal experts out there, please correct me if I say anything inaccurate, as I always say. I mean, uh, I mean, if I was, if I love the early, the early era Iron Maiden, you know, the, the debut in Killers. Like, even though when, you know, Paul Diano was pretty much forgotten about after he left the band and then, you know, Bruce Dickinson came over and he, he's pretty much, Bruce Dickinson's pretty much been the voice of Iron Maiden. In a lot of cases, I mean, I've actually met, you know, Iron Maiden fans that didn't even know there was a vocalist in the band before Bruce Dickinson. So, you know, unless, I don't know, let me take that back. I think the most devout Iron Maiden fan would know about, you know, at least the the two al first two albums, you know, the self-titled and Killers. And in, in the beginning, I mean, he was the voice of Iron Maiden, and he really, he helped get the early start of the band going, even though he got, you know, booted out for, I guess, he was drunked up, drugged up, and drunk, uh, getting a little disorderly, a little too much for them to handle, so, you know, it was time for him to go. But, uh, I mean, he definitely did a great job, and he didn't have the range like Bruce Dickinson did, that white, that, uh, how would you say that, wide operatic range, the leather lungs like, you know, Bruce Dickinson, but, uh, I mean, he had like kind of a grief, like, uh, kind of more of a gruff singing style, like, you know, kind of like a street urchin, and, um, I mean, the early Iron Maiden songs, I mean, the themes were more kind of like, you know, street themed, and it didn't really get into, you know, fantasy, philosophical, and historical. That was, came later with Bruce Dickinson, because he's like, he's like, I don't know, he's like a metal professor, but, you know, Paul Diano was more like the streetwise aspect to the band in that time, and, I mean, and, you know, during the early part of British heavy metal, so, I mean, he is definitely a, a major figure in modern metal as we know it, so, you know, yeah, so, he sh definitely doesn't deserve to be forsaken like, you know, he was, and, and he was, he's, and over the years, he's been active in projects, like, he had, you know, Paul Diano's Battle Zone, and he's had variations of the Paul Diano band, he, he even had a band called Killers, which was like, it was like really heavy groove thrash, I saw them in Vakken back in the 90s, in 94, I think, but, I mean, he's, he's still been a very active musician, he's got, you know, a following mainly in South America and in various parts of Europe, but, and he doesn't have the glory like he did, you know, in the Iron Maiden days, but, again, you know, he is someone I respect as an artist, and, you know, again, you know, a living piece of metal history, but, uh, on the down, on the down side though, about this DVD, I mean, when I when I bought it, I mean, I was expecting you know, more like really, you know, in your face traditional heavy metal and just you know something like Saxon or maybe you know his earlier band Iron Maiden, just you know some real in your face, you know, angry heavy metal. But when I played this instead, I got this really at least for the 80s era this really friendly commercial keyboard laden rock i wouldn't even consider it heavy metal it was just you know rock you know bordering commercial hard rock and uh, it just didn't really strike my fancy it was like he was trying to be like you know ufo and foreigner or you know uriah heap which i mean I, well not uriah heap i'm thinking 
but that really keyboard laden 80s commercial rock and it was kind of, that was a disappointment in that angle but at the same time you know it was nice to get a look in the past i mean i, I didn't if i knew what kind of music that was on this what he was performing i probably wouldn't have bought it you know sorry paul diano you know you i still respect you as a you know figure of metal history but I mean, this was just a total dud to me, but I still kept it nonetheless, and, uh, and it's in my collection, and, you know, if I have a friend over that's, you know, c curious about, you know, what's one of the has-beens of Iron Maiden glory, you know, has been up to, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I'll let him take a peek at it and what have you, but I'm, it's not something that I'm really would eager to play again or look at again, um... I mean, and, and the cover is deceiving. I mean, he has, you know, the leather jacket with one sleeve cut off. I mean, he looks, I mean, he looks exactly like uh, when I saw the Live at the Rainbow during the Killers era, you know, and, and, and that was a very massive concert, but this, it reminds me of another really, uh, this another sappy band from Britain called Saracen and they were called heavy metal but it was like the same thing this really lame keyboard rate this keyboard laden commercial radio rock and, and that is not heavy metal I'm sorry you can't fool a true a true metal fan with that and you know same go but uh, you know that did fool a metal fan like me into buying it you know, because you know, I know the history of Iron Maiden. And that's all I have to say. And I just ranted almost seven minutes on this. And here's my other favorite, Bruce Dickinson. Now, this one I love. I mean, this is probably one of my favorite DVDs. Um, Bruce Dickinson has always been a very intellectual guy. Very, He's always been creative. You know, he's, he's authored books. He's an airline pilot. He was a champion fencer. It's like, you know, what can this guy not do? He's like the, uh, how would you say? He's like the Bruce Wayne Batman of of heavy metal. Or, you know, the uh, Tony Stark. It's, you know, what doesn't he have? What can't he do? That type of thing. But, uh, again, no, this is from his solo career. The His, uh, I love the concerts. I definitely love the, the, the promotional videos. Uh, Tattooed Millionaire, I mean, that song definitely, you know, rocked my world when I was a kid. And, and uh... It sounded um, like his the, his first couple solo albums. They're more like rock, you know, slash hard rock. It wasn't like the massive heavy metal barrage like Iron Maiden, but you know, all in all, they're very good songs, very meaning meaningful songs. Uh, um, I mean, he's definitely showing that you know he could do other kinds of music than Iron Maiden, and and it's just as good. Um, and one of the concerts, like the the guitar tone, the guitars are different. His backup band, like the guys are playing these really, um, really the my probably least favorite guitars, the Fender Jaguars. I think they're ugly, and they have that horrible clanging sound that just doesn't fit right. So, but I guess you know the way he he constructed the songs for those kind of guitars, because you know different kind of guitars are good for different styles and different sounds. So, uh, and, um, but, and some songs are kind of, kind of reminded me of ACDC or Fast Way, um, like the early British hard rock type of thing. He does a T-Rex cover, I think, all the young dudes. Um, Scream For Me Brazil. And, uh, of course, you know, I love the video, you know, the, the concept videos. It's like, you know, towards the, the latter part, because this goes, like, it goes, you know, to the end of the 90s. Like, you know, from 90 to 99. And, you know, Blaze Bailey was filling his shoes in, in the latter part, the mid to latter 90s. So, you know, he definitely had a lot of, lot to do in his solo career. Um... 
but I think like his solo songs towards the end, they started to sound more heavy metal, you know, like like Iron Maiden, even in the videos, like, you know, The Road to Hell, Paved with Good Intentions. I mean, Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden is, you know, in his backup band in that video. Even their third guitarist that, you know, became the extra in Iron Maiden, he played in, uh, he was in, he started out in uh, Bruce Dickinson's solo band, and what have you. And, uh, again, and, of course, you know, it has Tyranny Souls, EPK, I guess it's like a concept of three videos, I'm not sh sure. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and since I'm a, you know, I love, you know, looking back into the, you know, the, the early part of the metal of British heavy metal. If you're into the new wave of British heavy metal, you're even treated to uh, Samson, Biceps of Steel, which was like a long form, two song con concept video, mini movie. Where Sam, they they actually have a character called Samson. He's he's a long hair burly roadie with a heart of gold, and he beats on these mean bouncers for roughing up the kids, and they cut his hair. So yeah, Samson and Delilah, pretty campy take on that little Bible story. It's uh, I mean, all in all, you definitely got to see it and you know look it up, you know if if you can't buy it, but uh. Again, you know, I'm just glad to have this as a part of my collection. Definitely saved my sanity a few times during, you know, those army days. And uh, now it's time to put it in the box. Thanks for watching Joe's Record Store. And look for some real metal and real metal history. Don't go by what other people te are telling you or what uh, the mul you know mass media is telling you. Think for yourself. Look for yourself when it comes to music. Stay metal. Thanks for watching Joe's Record Store.